cavalier, the most amazing man. He had the look you very, very fine, the haunting, hunted kind. I asked him to say what had happened, how it all began. I asked again, he never said a word. As if he hadn't heard. For the sake of change, not punishment. In the opening oracle of Isaiah, the prophet calls the religious establishment in Jerusalem Sodom and Gomorrah and commands them to seek social justice instead of their own advancement. Yet, it is not merely co to condemn them, but to bring them to a new attitude. Come, let us set things right between us. Though your sins be like scarlet, and they are, I want to make you white and s as snow, says Yahweh. How consoling and inviting God is, right after pulling no punches. The same pattern emerges in Matthew's Gospel in Jesus' diatribe against the religious leaders in his time. Nothing any of us could say today would match Jesus' anger and judgment on hypocrisy and spiritual leadership and self-serving religious authority. He gets downright nasty with the leaders and mocks their religious fashion show and their unwillingness to lift a finger to bear the burdens that they place on people. He seems to be against all titles that make them think they are higher or better than others. All lessons we could still learn today. I guess things never change. Yet, he ends by calling them to humility and promising them that God will do the exalting. They do not need to worry about any climbing, self-promoting, or career advancement themselves. In our prayers today, let us start with, Humble God, make us like you. You do not lord it over us, but wait patiently for us to change. May we do the same with our brothers and sisters on the journey. Disappeared again, and I saw thousands of millions crying for this man. And then I heard them mentioning my name, reading 